Welcome to Coilex TV and the Tees family. My name is Laura Tees and today we are starting our interview line. First up is my brother Sebastian Tees, who is the sixth generation of shoe designer. He will tell you about his challenges, about his daily routines, and he will tell you about one of the biggest risks he ever took with a product. Coilex, where 150 years of family tradition meets innovation, timeless design, and sustainable thinking. Hello, my name is Sebastian Thies, sixth generation shoemaker since 1856, and we are creating sustainable and innovative footwear. I was born in a shoebox found in Munich, and I was always attracted to sneakers and collecting, and since it's, it was a family business, um, as a punishment, my father made me and my sister work in the company when we were children sometimes. So we learned early enough what we like and what we don't like, and obviously the parts we liked were on the bigger side. Especially going to the fairs, even as a child, I like to go there and meet all the people and like get a part of the air of the fashion industry. Almost every August we had a fair in Las Vegas and we had fairs in Düsseldorf and Milano and Riva, Italy, Spain and even Asia. So we got around quite a lot and it was always fun. Things I didn't really like was like paperwork, getting rid of old documents and yeah, all the recycling stuff. After school I started uh, studying fashion business management and I worked for another big footwear retailer. Then I had an accident, a little snowboard accident, so I was not officially allowed to work for quite some time. So what you do, you're forced to join your own family business because they're the only ones who take the risk to employ you even, so, even though you have no insurance. And yeah, so that's how I started in the company. And if you're in the company for four years in your own company, you will more likely not leave it again. And this was the case. I get along with my father quite well, so it was also easy. And my aunt was also at that time a leader in the company. And yeah, they, they gave me a lot of freedom and more freedom than you normally have when you're like 22 years old. And yeah, they gave me my own department from the beginning because they said I have to find my own business within the company and start my own creative projects. Freedom-wise, it was really natural to start and stay there because where else do you have the chance to do something like this? I got to travel a lot, even alone, those days. And so when I found something interesting somewhere, like a product or a material or an idea, I, w I had the freedom to just get on the project and try to fulfill it and really take the risk, which was also a financial risk, also for the company but you don't learn without making mistakes. So yeah, they, they allowed me to make mistakes. Some were big, some were smaller, and also some things were really successful and they would have never existed if I wouldn't have had the freedom. So yeah, that was something really unique about being in your own family company and having the freedom like a CEO, but working as a like intern. <laughs> So that was a very odd mix and yeah, that uh, forced me to take big decisions on my own and also had to be responsible for those decisions on my own. We did something really odd, me and, and my, at that time, future wife, we were traveling to Hong Kong and I don't know, we were just having uh, some fun there in the evening at the bar and because we saw some really nice sunglasses, which we really liked personally. and. We, we were talking about how to make a business idea out of these sunglasses which have nothing to do with our footwear and those were really odd in the design and very special and we've uh, never seen something like this before and yeah so at the end after two days we just ordered a full container of sunglasses and my father's only reply was okay you have to sell all those sunglasses later on and at the end, it was a huge success because we sold, I don't know, more than 60,000 sunglasses in the first season only, which was like amazing for us. And yeah, so this was something which could have gone really wrong, but it turned out well. And this also had a big impact on our future because we just saw if we think that an idea is really good, 
it cannot be that bad that you cannot make something out of it. So even if it's not a big success, if the idea is good, it would somehow work out and maybe you have to move on to other projects or you really have a new business case where you can build on and we did this with accessories in general. So this was the start to make accessories every once in a while and yeah. Carmen and me, we met studying for fashion business management and yeah, she was already a fashion pro because she was she studied fashion design before she was also a tailor or she is a tailor and yeah so she had very huge expertise and i was born in this shoebox found in munich so uh, yeah we were really two freaks and fashion product nerds she's a denim specialist and she was really into garments and fashion and yeah somehow it took two years when we started to like each other and then she joined few years later our company and now we are partners. Our goal is that we become the go-to destination when people think about sustainable, innovative and eco-friendly footwear. And the, the first thing that comes to their mind is our squirrel. And yeah, the same thing for Net2 that when you really think about high-end luxury sneakers, rain boots and true innovation then the first thing that should come to your mind is net too and yeah that people just even out of curiosity are visiting our website to see what is new and what is the state of the art footwear on the market and that everybody can be sure that we are always ahead of the game every shoe creation comes to existence in a different way like we are never sitting on a table and think about, okay, what could we use next to make a shoe? So, of course, we are always looking back into our archives and back to the past seasons to see what worked well, what didn't work well. So, of course, you're building on successful stories, but the general ideas also for our innovations come really from all different influences and ways like sometimes when we're traveling we're discovering something really amazing or we we read a book or magazine print media where you get ideas especially from other industries so we don't really take our inspiration from fashion business but more or less can be architecture can be furniture can be nature science and yeah so every product has its own story its own history sometimes long sometimes short um, yeah so there's not this one process to follow follow and yeah we are working with many different people also so we also have a lot of innovators approaching us to work together the same way the other way actually there's no day which is the same of course we have a lot of office work but we also have to travel a lot we have many fairs so we try not to work really in these classical seasons, summer and winter, but of course in some way you have seasons. So every season is different, but of course the individual season like summer or winter is similar. But you change every few weeks and also the products change and yeah, so it never gets boring and on some day you have photo shootings, you take um, product shots the next day you're designing products the other day you have meetings with customers the next day you have meetings with the suppliers or everything on the same day so um, it never gets boring the thing i'm most proud of is that we still survive after 165 years two world wars financial crises, uh, viruses, and nothing killed us as a family and as a company. And that's what I'm really proud of and that we are not just focusing on our past, but that we are a very innovative and future focused company with a rich history. And I think that makes us unique, that we don't um, lean back and just refer to our rich history but also to do something new i'm really proud of many of our products especially the ones which are maybe not so commercially successful but where we have like a long lasting feedback and where we think okay 
it was really brave to launch a product like this. For example, I like our Oxblood sneaker, which was like really something where you have to be brave to launch or to present a product like this, especially when you focus a lot on vegan and sustainable products. But you always have to expect that some people don't really read between the lines and that they just see what they want to see and that you get a lot of maybe negative feedback, even though there's absolutely no reason for that because it was like an educational project. But of course, it's always a risk and you have to be a very transparent company and you really have to stand behind your projects in order to take a risk like this to present an Oxblood sneaker on a vegan fair in Berlin. The biggest challenge we have is more or less the competition with major billion dollar companies and brands which make it really hard for small brands and small corporations and small family business like ours uh, to establish yourself as a brand and to play in the game with yeah huge sharks of the business and that's our main main thing to get over and to make people believe also in smaller brands and in true product innovation and as you can see from our brand it's also possible to be really a pioneer and innovative if you're not a billion dollar company and maybe it shows that even then you're you have more possibilities because you don't have to satisfy any stakeholders or uh, stock owners of your company i hope that we can celebrate our 200 years together <laughs> <laughs>